Today, we're looking at how to make bread. To make our bread, we need flour. Flour is a powder made from grinding wheat, and wheat is a cereal grain grown by farmers all over the world. So, Tony, how do we harvest our wheat grain? Well, first, Emma, the wheat needs to be dry, and to harvest the wheat, we'll need to use a combine harvester. A combine harvester is a heavy machine that combines three separate jobs into one simple process, and that works, Emma, by... First, a rotating reel flattens the crops down to the cutter. The crops are then cut and pushed through the machine into a threshing drum that shakes the grains away from their stalks. The grain collected is then emptied every now and then into tractors which drive alongside. Then, while the combine continues its work, the tractor goes back to the farm where the grain is stored ready to be made into flour. There has been a watermill on this site for over 800 years. And the stone milling that takes place here is one of the oldest and slowest, but still best methods for turning wheat grain into flour. And I think we should have a look at how they do it. The waters of the River Gowie flow past the mill, turning this giant wheel, which is connected to the gears inside the main building. The gear wheels are connected to that vertical shaft that you saw downstairs. Upstairs, that turns these traditional French burr stones. It also turns this damsel, which knocks all of the wheat onto them. There's two stones. There's a bed stone, which just sleeps on the bottom, and the runner stone, which runs around doing all of the work on the top. It grinds the wheat together, so that by the time it comes to the outside of the stones, it's turned into flour. How good is that? Now, as you've seen, it is a slow process, but that slow process means that every bit of grain is turned into the finest flour. Bakers start work very, very early, and today was a 5.30 start for the whole Fiddler family. This morning, I started at half past five, came in here and I have to weigh out my flour and put my salt, yeast, oil, water, all in my pan. White bread is just white flour, salt, yeast, oil and water. That's it. Nothing else, no preservatives, no added extras, no sugar, no emulsifiers, no bread improvers, just 100% five ingredients. When I got doing more fancy breads really, I wrote my dad in and he's probably been helping me for three years. And then as my kiddies have got older, that was Bobby this morning, she comes and weighs the dough out. So she has to cut it, weigh it, gives it to my dad. My dad puts it in tins. From a basic white mix, we will do farmhouse tins. We will do some what we call sticks or baguettes. We do buns. Out of that white mix is what you saw Bobby do the tur and shur. She took some aside for that tur and shurs. And the Mediterranean cobs was made out of a white mix. You also saw Bobby do a plat. That was out of the white bread. You could brush it with milk and it would just give a different finish. You could brush it with melted butter and it would make it shine. And she sprinkled that with poppy seeds. You could put anything on that. Once we've kneaded the bread and it's gone in the tins, it goes on the proving racks and it has to prove. This is where it doubles in size and you've just got to get it right before it goes in the oven. If it overproves, it sinks back into the tin and flops out over the sides. So you've just got to get it just right. If they go in for 10 minutes on a nice hot oven and after 10 minutes it's reduced to 200 and then it's baked for 25 minutes. And when you open the oven doors, oh, it's a lovely smell, lovely sight to see all this golden bread. It's gone in, white, pale, pasty, come out bread. 